G'day everyone, and welcome back to Lubrication Explained. Today we're going to be talking about the different API groups of base oils. So you've probably heard people talk about Group 1, Group 2, Group 3 base oils. So we're going to discuss what they are and what that means for you. So the ones that you're probably most familiar with are these three groups. So Group 1, Group 2, and Group 3. And these are kind of the mineral oils. Now, something that distinguishes the mineral oils um, is their saturate content, sulfur content, and their viscosity index. So what does that actually mean for the different groups? Let's talk about saturates first. So a uh, saturated hydrocarbon is one that doesn't have any double bonds. So as an example, um, you know, you have an uh, ethylene molecule or ethene uh, that's got a uh, sort of a carbon-carbon double bond in it. And the problem with carbon-carbon double bonds is that they are relatively oxidatively unstable, so they are subject to attack. And this is why when we manufacture lubricants, um, or specifically uh, when we refine them, uh, we try and remove as many of those double-double uh, carbon bonds as possible uh, through a process of hydrocracking. And that will give you an ethane molecule, which is much more stable. So this is, you know, with only two carbons, the, the simplest... Uh, version of um, saturating a hydrocarbon that I can give. But you can obviously do that for any length of a hydrocarbon chain. So the saturate content um, varies between group 1 and group 3. Then we move across to sulfur, and you might ask, where does the sulfur come from in a base oil? So if you remember, and I'll cover this in more detail in another video, um, all mineral oils start their life as crude oil that comes out of the ground. So that's kind of what defines a mineral oil. And within crude oil, there are an infinite combination of different molecules. And some of the molecules that I'm showing here below are the ones that contain sulfur. So often there'll be aromatic compounds, so they're the ones with the benzene rings. Um, they will contain sulfur. But there are also you know, sulfides and thiols, um, as well as disulfides. And these are all sulfur-containing compounds. Uh, we try and remove those uh, through a desulfurization process as we move from group 1 to group 3. So remember, as we're moving from group 1 to group 3, we're effectively um, kind of, it's more refined, if you like. Finally, there's the viscosity index. And again, this is one that I'll talk about. It'll get its own standalone video. Um, but basically, the viscosity index is the measure of how much does your viscosity change with temperature, right? So like other Newtonian liquids, um, lubricants tend to be thick when they're cold and thin when they're warm. And the degree of that change um, gives you your viscosity index, where a higher viscosity index is more desirable. So that's the mineral oils, group one through three. Below those, we've also got group four and group five. Now, group four are all what we call the poly-alpha olefins, and they're a class, uh, the most common class of synthetic lubricants. And group five is all the others. Now, one of the maybe misnomers is that group five is all synthetic. That's not entirely true, so let's explore that in a little bit more detail. Synthetic oils can actually come from either group three, group four, or group five. And that's for some different reasons. So let's look at group four first. They are all the poly-alpha olefins, which are, by definition, all synthetics. So if you have a lubricant that is manufactured from group four base stocks, it is, by definition, a full synthetic. However, if you have a lubricant that comes from group three, it may also be marketed as fully synthetic. There was actually a uh, court ruling in 1999 in the US, which kind of governs um, how products can be marketed uh, in the consumer space. So typically, if you go and you buy what is called a full synthetic engine oil from the shop for your car, um, it may be a very heavily refined group three, because the legal determination was that um, synthetic, when it comes to the consumer segment, refers more to the performance of the lubricant as opposed to the way it was manufactured. 
So this is why some group threes, when they're heavily refined, can be referred to as full synthetic. Then we come to group five. Now group five is tricky because it does contain some full synthetics. Polyalkylene glycols, also known as PAGs, are an example. Um, alkylated naphthalenes, for example, uh, synthetic esters. These are all full synthetic molecules. However, group five also contains things like white oils or the paraffinic uh, base oils or uh, the silicon based base oils. And those are neither mineral nor fully synthetic. Right? So um, group five does contain some synthetic base stocks, but not all group fives are synthetics. I hope that clears that up. So let's cl concentrate on the mineral base stocks for a little bit. Um, synthetics will we'll have to go in, in, into a little bit more detail because um, the way that they're manufactured is very different. But if we concentrate on the minerals, let's look at some of the different properties and how they are affected as you move between the groups. So for example, solvency. This is a really interesting one. So solvency is highest for group one. And the reason is because solvency is kind of a measure of the polarity of all the molecules within, um, within the base oil. And group one base oils have the most polar molecules. So especially all those um, aromatics, they are kind of highly uh, uh, polar. And that helps with solvency. Now solvency is important for two reasons. First, because you need a certain amount of solvation to be able to get your additive package um, to go into solution within the base oil. But also, um, and this is important for turbine oils in particular, um, varnish precursors tend to stay in solution for much longer in a group one than they do in a group two or group three. Um, and that, in some ways, the move from group one to group two and three turbine oils is one of the reasons we are seeing more incidences of varnish in uh, industrial gas turbines. Oxidation stability. Now, this one's a bit of a tricky one. So, uh, the amount of sulfur, and specifically aromatic sulfur, within a base oil, um, kind of gives it some inherent oxidation stability. And therefore, for the base oil at least, the group ones are more inherently oxidatively stable. Now that probably goes uh, contrary to everything that you've heard about your lubricants. You've probably heard that the group threes are much more oxidatively stable than group ones. And that is actually true of the finished lubricant. So why do they go in reverse? Well, in a virgin base oil, Group 1s, because of their sulfur content and the aromatic content, are more inherently oxidatively stable. However, when you create a finished lubricant, we put antioxidant additives into the finished lubricant. And they work better in conjunction with a group 2 or group 3. So as a result, the finished lubricant of a group 2 or 3 uh, has more oxidation stability than a group 1. So that's a one that's a little bit counterintuitive. We've also got the viscosity stability. So that is the viscosity index. And we know that group threes uh, have higher uh, VIs than uh, group ones. And that's also related to the pore point as well. Finally, we've got toxicity. Now, it's the aromatic compounds with their benzene rings, which are the most uh, toxic components of a crude oil. So we generally remove these as part of the refining process, and therefore group threes are lower in toxicity than uh, group ones are. The other way that we can think of this is in maybe a different space. So let's take a triangle and talk about the relative content of paraffins, aromatics, and naphthenes. So what these look like is, you know, sort of chains, chains with benzene rings and chains with a, a single aromatic ring. So if we were to map where do group ones kind of sit in this triangle, they sit roughly in the middle. 
right? So this is where a group one would sit. So it has a decent amount of aromatic content, um, some naphthenes and some paraffins. As we more heavily refine it and we remove some of those aromatics and we convert some of the naphthenes into paraffins, we move to group two base oils. Then as we heavily refine it again uh, through more severe hydro processing, we end up with group threes. And finally, group fours or the PAOs are fully paraffinic. So by definition, they are made from molecules which are paraffins and you end up with a finished lubricant which is 100% paraffinic. So that's where the group fours, also known as the PAOs, sit. So I hope that this has kind of given you a bit of a flavor for the different API um, base oil classifications. Um, I'll go into more detail about how these are manufactured in other videos, um, but hopefully this has given you a bit of a flavor for how to recognize the different base oil groups and what that might mean for your finished lubricant. Thanks for listening. This has been Lubrication Explained.